Well, there are, the two rivers come together, the Ohio and the Kanawha. Many people believe that, that the confluence of water, of rivers, do somehow exacerbate paranormal phenomena. Unexplained Cases is supported by the American Paranormal Press. Carrie Nyon and Cullen Therapies. One of the cases we've always wanted to open is that of the Mothman. When it comes to urban legends, this guy takes the proverbial cake. He checks off all the boxes. Cryptid, paranormal, interdimensional. And if not for this winged, red-eyed creature, Point Pleasant, West Virginia might only be known for a tragic bridge collapse that occurred on December 15th, 1967. The Silver Bridge collapsed during heavy rush hour traffic, claiming 46 lives. Sightings of Mothman in 1966 and 67 linked the creature to the cause of the collapse, but an official investigation determined stress corrosion cracking in an eye bar led to the disaster. I had the chance to meet and speak with Steve Ward at the world-famous Mothman Museum. On the subject of Mothman, Steve is an expert. Well, this is the world's only Mothman Museum, and it uh, came about because of the uh, sightings that took place back in the middle 60s. Uh, there were uh, uh, John Keel, who was a journalist from New York, came down about five times that year between November 66 and December 67. Uh, the, uh, it wasn't the first sighting, but the first really major sighting that took off what took place on November 15, 1966. Uh, two couples, the Scarberries and the, and the Mallets, were out by the TNT area. Now, the TNT area is about nine miles north of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and it was a, uh, an area where they made explosives for World War II. It was a huge complex in the 40s, dismantled shortly afterwards. Uh, there were some remnants left in the 60s, including the old North Power Plant. And that is where these two couples first saw this uh, creature, apparition, whatever you want to call it. It was about six, seven foot tall, uh, kind of humanoid in appearance, 10 foot wingspan, and red glowing eyes. And it chased their car into Point Pleasant. So that's, that's where it kind of started. That, that particular sighting was picked up by the wire services all over the world. So I, as a kid in Michigan, yeah, I was in junior high in November of 66, and I read about it in the newspaper because of the way the wire services picked it up. This is even before Mothman had a proper name. He was just called the bird. And I, I suspect it was some creative copy editor uh, because of the Batman TV show being popular at the time, uh, dubbed this guy Mothman. So that's, that's how it started. Uh, John Keel talked to a little over 100 people that year that saw this creature and uh, had pretty much the same physical description, although some people just seemed to see a big bird of some kind. Uh, its behavior was very odd. It didn't always flap its wings. Uh, people that saw it uh, had an outbreak of poltergeist phenomena when they got home. Sometimes it seemed to appear like an apparition in people's bedrooms. Very, very strange circumstances. Some people even had missing time that saw it. But anyway, that's, that's how it started. And uh, uh, Jeff Wamsley, who is the curator and owner of the museum, he was uh, six years old when all this happened, uh, from the, uh, the sightings of the Mothman to the collapse of the Silver Bridge about 13 months later. Uh, he, uh, uh, he was actually in his basement at the time playing, and he actually heard the crash of the bridge at the time. But over the years, his father had collected some uh, 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 information on the bridge collapse and uh, various articles and so forth. Jeff picked up with that over the years. And eventually in 2006, he established the Mothman Museum, originally on the other side of the street in a much smaller building. 
And since then, it's moved across the street. It keeps growing, it keeps expanding. He has more stuff that he can't even fit in here. It's, it's a great, it has many great displays on, on things like the Men in Black, the, the first major sighting, uh, John Keel and so forth. It has articles uh, uh, that, that chronicle the, the coverage of the bridge collapse when they, they didn't know how many people had perished on the bridge when they were still searching for bodies, uh, the survivors. It has all kinds of sightings of the Mothman, the UFOs that, that uh, occurred at this particular time. Uh, so it's just really, uh, it's very comprehensive and just really covers uh, the, the whole aspect of the uh, of, of what had happened. It also has a uh, information on Mary Heyer. She was the uh, reporter that uh, was a friend and colleague of John Keel. And she was the one that had a column called Where the Waters Mingle. And that she was the one that was reporting on uh, uh, stories about the Mothman, uh, UFOs, and even the uh, infamous Men in Black. I wondered, of course, if Steve had ever encountered Mothman. I have never seen the Mothman. I have spoken to some of the original witnesses. I spoke to Linda Scarberry, who was one of the ladies in that car that was chased in November of 66. A uh, very credible lady. She's no longer with us, unfortunately. I also have spoken to Faye DeWitt, who is still with us. She, uh, she has been seen many times in many documentaries, and uh, she was not mentioned in the Mothman Prophecies by John Keel, but uh, you will recognize her because she often says, uh, this is sort of her catchphrase, it had the biggest, reddest eyes you ever did see. Another very credible lady. I also talked to Tom Urey. Now, Tom Urey didn't see the Mothman per se, but he saw a giant bird he couldn't uh, identify with about a 10 to 12 foot wingspan. Robin Bellamy is another lady, young lady. She was 10 years old. They were driving down the Ohio River and uh, alongside the Ohio River and she saw it standing there. And then more recently, I spoke to a lady named Linda Sigmund. She saw it when she was about 16, about 12 miles north of here. It was April of 67. She was with her boyfriend, uh, kind of out in the country. First thing they saw was some kind of a large, bright orb or something like that. Uh, it, it's a long story, but they took off. She was looking outside the window and she saw essentially the Mothman, a, a winged creature. He did not see it. And she also uh, experienced some missing time during that period. So um, I, I spoke to some very credible people that saw something. His heyday was in the middle 60s, even though other people have seen something like it since then. Uh, there have been many, many winged creatures or apparitions or whatever seen all over the world. There was the Houston Batman, they called it, in the 1950s. There was the Wisconsin Man Bat in the 90s. Uh, uh, father and son saw this big, ugly bat-like thing that brushed against its window, the car window. And when they got home, they had, uh, uh, they, they both contracted some kind of a illness. They were very nauseous. John Keel believed that these things might actually be emanating from the same source. He talked about things like transmogrifications of energy. And he thought that perhaps uh, these things just simply came from the same source, but somehow manifested differently in a very temporal sense, a paraphysical sense. So if he was onto something, uh, then perhaps we are talking about the same thing with different appearances. Uh, very difficult to condense John Keel's ideas in a few paragraphs, but there is something very elusive, very uh, uh, ethereal about some of these things. They don't seem to be just flesh and blood. It's possible that there is something to do with the rivers, the flowing of the rivers, that does sort of magnify or amplify this kind of phenomenon um, but you know who knows it's just very it's very difficult it's 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 important to try to find patterns and connections and parallels and you will find that when you look at these things all these things seem to connect together they don't seem to be separate entities so to speak so it's uh, it's quite a mystery but we need to keep an open mind to try and determine what is what has really gone on so is Mothman just an urban legend? A creature created out of imaginations 
and a need to explain a horrific bridge accident? Or is it like many other unexplained instances? Something that sounds too unreal to be real, but actually is. I remain skeptical, but I also know that with every urban legend, there's at least a shred of truth. And the truth is what we're always in search of. Reporting for Unexplained Cases, I'm Rick Garner.